Hi members, welcome back. So here goes the next small cabochon capture for a ring. This is the traditional, oh, hit my camera. This is the traditional um, spiral ring that you see a lot on the internet, but I'm going to show you how I make it so that you have another one for your skill set. Okay, I'm going to start with two wires that are cut to 12 inches each. They are 20 gauge square soft copper. I've already pre-straightened them with my nylon jaw and I took two feet of 26 gauge round. I found the center and I wrapped seven times. Um, I found the center of the 26 gauge wrapped seven times around the center of my ring bands, of my ring wires. I'm a little bit odd under the camera with the ring mandrel, but you would have this end up against your lap, um, kind of in the crux of your, of your lap and your hip, and you could have this end braced up against the table. So, you know, it would be braced for you to work with. I'm just trying to hold it <laughs> underneath the camera, so it's a little bit odd. So I want my ring to be a size six, maybe six and a quarter. And like I showed in some of my other ring videos, my trick is to start way up here to, you know, around a size three, a couple of sizes smaller than what you want to create the spring coil for my shank. So I just took the right hand side and went around the mandrel once. Now I'm going to take the left hand side and I'm going to go around the mandrel once. Just try to keep the wires square. Bring them all the way around until they cross right here. And I've got my 26 gauge underneath all of it. Okay. And now to grow it um, down here, I'm going to hammer this shank, so I'm probably just going to grow it down here to about a five and three quarter. So I'll just slide it down. Be careful you don't break your 26 gauge. And then just make sure you got a nice, nice wrap around the mandrel, okay? We'll use these 26 gauges to tie these together and don't worry so much because we're um, going to hammer it out. So I'm going to take the right hand side one and I'm going to pass between these two right here and do a couple of wraps getting it real close to the other pair in the middle there. Now I'll jump over both of these, go under the opposite side here, come back up and loop these two. Come back over them. So we've grabbed a full loop around those two. And now I'll just come back this way and do a complete 360 around this pair. Come back under and pass back to this side. Just work patiently back through the ring shank to this side. Okay, so you've caught these two free wires. Try not to bend it like I just did. You caught these two free wires with this 26 gauge. And now we're going to go catch this side. I'm just going to bring my camera a little closer. Okay. 
Now these two wires turned up on corners. So I'll get this 26 gauge. I'll do a complete 360 around the first two ring shank bands. I'll jump over all four of them. Come back through the middle. So that you do a complete 360 around the other pair. I'll do the same to this side now. Just come over here and do a complete 360 around these two. And then come back through the shank. It's like a one and a half. And then come back through to this side. And just get your weave nice and close to the middle. Just like that. Now we'll take, keep these on, so we'll use them later. Take your flat nose, just give a little tap, and a little tap right there. Since we're going to seat a 10 millimeter cab, just kind of like to earmark it. These two outside um, free wires now, we'll turn them slightly out, not far, just slightly, right there at the weave. Okay, and turn them slightly upward. So it's kind of like that. Okay, I like to pre-turn these. Um, so take these, we're going to spiral it around. And pass over these two okay. and then take this other one spiral it around just kind of raise them slightly then we'll chase it with the second wire so you've kind of got this upward little curve on the wire We'll do the same to this side. Just kind of follow it around. So you've got this, these little inside curves. It's like an S shape. Put your stone in the middle. Now kind of get them close with your fingers. Try to keep your stone right there where the weave is. And just with your fingers, snuggle the wires up to the stone. Get to this side. Just hold it in the middle of the weave. Don't let anything move. And just use your fingers and snuggle the wires up. I'm trying to show you like this. So they're kind of skirting the outside edges of your stone. Just work patiently. You know, turn the ring so that you're working with your strong hand. If you have to take them out and bend them forward a little bit, you can. If you struggle with it, you can take a plier to help you, just be real careful. So I like to hold the, the gemstone where I need it and then just take the plier and help you scooch that wire in a little bit if you need to. Sometimes just doing it with muscle works good. And you want to just catch that soft shoulder 
take my plier and get this guy a little bit more on that edge. And just work patiently. Keep control of your 26 gauge. Try to stay in the center of your bands with the stone. And it's a little squirrely until so you do it a few times. You have to make sure these two catch the upper shoulder of the stone. Oh. when you're coming round, okay? You have to catch that upper shoulder. If you don't, it's gonna fall out all day. So just get it nice and tight. I hope you can see how I kinda keep your finger on top, lift the two wires and pull them forwards a little bit tight. Just keep working until you get a nice snug capture. And then when you do, just hold all that to protect it. Slant these down. We're gonna pass them under the shank. So you see I've got my coils here. I'm gonna make a big turn in the leading wire. Hold in my, my wires there and I'm gonna pass through the shank and get this real tight and real close. If you need to use a plier to help you, you can do that. Just work patiently. Just like that. So you've got a nice snug hold. I've got a nice secure grab on the shoulder. And before I tighten it up, I'm going to do the other side so we can make small adjustments and not lose too much of the top of the gemstone. So I'll hold, you know, the coil on top of the gemstone, make a nice long curve with these. It's a little bit tight. Get them through the shank. Straighten these out and I'll help you. And just pull with a little muscle. Okay, and leave it like that. Whew. It's pretty good. Can I have it going this way a little bit? Okay. You just want to make sure that your ring is nice. If you need to move them down a little bit because you got too much gem underneath the wire, you can do that before you tighten it all up. Just don't go too far. Okay, and then I like to get my plier, do a real gentle squeezing. It's a nice wide plier head. Still holding my gem under my thumb and carefully pull each one over to the top of the shank just like that. Come to this side, do the same. Make sure your wires are where you need them. Get a little plier, a wide nose plier, and make the smallest careful pressure. Okay. And then one at a time, you can bring them over real nice and tight. just like that. And at this point, I like to look at the profile before I cut anything. Make sure my ring is actually looking upright. I like to settle it back onto the shank as well while I have the wires, um, excess wires, so I can, you know, if I need to make adjustments, I can. And just work so that you don't snap these two off and snuggle your ring. It's going to be tight. Oh, and that's what I'm talking about. My stone just popped out for this adjustment. So I'm going to stick it back in there. 
while it's on the mandrel, make sure it's seated. I'm going to bring these sides back up. Just real careful you don't make any bends in your side wires here. Just like that, get them back up onto the stone. This happened because we grew the ring back uh, on the mandrel, so it stretched my wires back out. But that's why you do this. Better it happens here than on your customer's finger or your finger. So I'll just bring these back up slightly. That looks pretty good. And I'm at about a five here, so I'm going to grow it just a little bit more. Hold on to the face of your ring. Don't do like me and try to show it under the camera so the stone falls out. So I'll get it right to about here. I'll hammer it down. It might be close to a six by the time we're done. Okay. When you're happy with that, you can get your wires under control here. So at this point right here at the edges, you can take your rubber mallet, hold the face of your ring, and just tap that bulk down from the turned wires. Just light tapping. Okay. Same with this side. I like to settle these onto the mandrel. It's okay if they're a little crunchy. And you're looking for this bulk right here to take that bulk out. You could do it with your plier too, but I'm on the mandrel. So I might as well do it here on the mandrel where I've got my ring head looking straight ahead too. It helps. And then I'm going to go ahead and hammer it slightly uh, while it's here before I close it. And I'm going to start at the back, just tapping to feel my hammer. Start at the back center. i got my finger on my stone. And I'm going to hit with my mandrel towards the stone on each side of the shank. I'm going to hit with my hammer, I mean. I keep saying my mandrel. Okay. The ring will grow slightly. You can start to see as I hammer it. So uh, once I get it to about here, I'm going to hammer it a final time with a metal hammer and I'll show you I'll show you that when we get there. So I'll just make sure that I've got a real nice tight seat right here for these two wires. I'm going to trim the lowest one and then curl the top one over it to hide the cut. Okay, you can do whatever you want with these wires. You can bring them up. You can bring them up more if you want to. Um, I'm going to make this ring real easy and simple. So I'll raise this lower wire and I'll cut it so it lives in the middle there. Tap it down and then just take this one I try to do a real nice cover up on that cut. I like for it to stay close to the ring. So I pre-turn so I know about what I need. I'm going to trim it right there. Get my round nose or maybe even your bent nose. I got my bent nose handy so I'm going to take these. and I'm just going to turn a tiny little spiral into this wire. I'll just let it live right there. Make sure that the profile on that spiral head is down. And then I also like to just skinny it up so that it fits the shank. Everything's pointed down, it's tight. Okay, nice and clean. So this side I'll do the same thing.
I'm going to tap this lower wire against the shank to get a nice close fit. I'll trim it so that it lives in the middle. Tap it nice and tight. And then take this one them right here to help it curl. Just make about a four millimeter turn. Stay on the shank of the ring so you can see what you need and then trim it and spiral it in. and over that other cut. Nice and tight. Close it up from the side a little bit, make it the size of your shank, then tap it on top. Make sure that the tip is inward and the profile is low. Okay, really good. We left these on here in the event that you you know, want to add bead balls or want to weave any of these wires down onto the shank. So if we're not going to use them, we don't want to land them underneath the ring. So whittle them until they get up here. And then um, you can find, you know, a discreet place right in there to cut it and tuck it. Or you can make a few wraps here. If you feel like you know, you need to tighten anything up right here, in part is why I leave them, because then I don't have to tie additional wire on if I need to shore up these frame wires. These are just living right here and ready. I'm going to do it with five or six wraps, make it look deliberate and like its design, but I'm just tying these together a little bit more. Uh, to make sure that nothing lets go at this at this corner of the ring. And I'll do it on both sides. Okay, so that's about right. I'll cut it right there and I'll tuck it up in there so that it's never felt on the finger. Just leave two or three little mil millimeters there turn that tip in, get on top of it, and wrap it in, just like that. Do the same on this side. Come over here, got my nice 26 gauge living here. So I'm going to make, I do five, so I'll do five on this side. So I hope you enjoy this little ring tutorial. This is a more traditional form of ring capture that you see all the time. But hopefully showing you how to tie this 26 gauge on first and how to weave the shank together in this way makes it a little bit easier for you to do. Catching small stones is tricky no matter what you do. So you just practice a few times and uh, then you'll be a pro. It doesn't take too much. Just handling it a few times. These rings are great for selling. Um, you can make them in copper and sterling silver. If you have a really nice stone, it's a clean finish for a nice gold ring. Okay. Well, I did four. Good, so I'll just do four here. If you enjoyed this, Please leave me a comment. Look me up on social media if you make some of these and show me your beautiful creations. Give me a thumbs up and please remember to subscribe if you haven't already. All right, so there's this beautiful mood changing ring. One final time on the mandrel. I'm going to settle it all the way down here until I feel resistance without anything shifting 
And now I'm going to get my metal hammer. And I'm going to put my finger over the gemstone. Whoop, wrong hammer. Get my metal hammer, put my finger over the gemstone, and hammer from the center to both sides and hopefully grow my ring down to a number six. Be careful on the sides not to strike your elements, okay? Hammer cleanly across all four shank bands and then settle your ring a little bit. And then now, from hammering this way, we also need to hammer down. So slide, put your finger over this, and slide and strike. You'll see that it grew the ring. You want to make sure your elements don't shift. You don't want to do that, you know, to the degree of ruining your ring, but it does grow it. The mandrel's slanted, I mean, uh, tapered, so we have to flip the ring and now gently hammer down these upper bands. And that's what keeps them together. We've got a beautiful, nice, when it free falls, we've got a nice size six, maybe a smidge smaller. And if I wanted to stretch it, I could probably hammer it a little bit more, but I'm not going to. I'm good with this. You know, if, if your size doesn't end up perfect, don't, don't stretch the ring to the point of ruining it. Just call it a size five and three quarter and make the next one a little bigger. Okay, so that's a gorgeous mood ring. Um, let me see if it even fits me at five and three quarter. It does. Oh, so pretty. That is so pretty. I love these little cabochons. Okay, so I hope you had fun, and I'll see you next time.